wait, wait, one more, one more. The last V Lookup Week video. This is tagging on to Excel V Lookup to calculate distances using latitude and longitude. V Lookup Week is a tradition started by Excel MVP Bill Jellen. This is a distance chart I created in Excel between airports in New York. The distance between airports was calculated by my get distance function, which needs latitude and longitude for two points, and works the same in Excel and in Access. In Excel, a cell formula calls my get distance function. Latitude and longitude for each airport is determined using VLOOKUP functions. The cell that's being looked up is the city on top. Let's find out what that is. I go to my table. I see that column 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is latitude, and column 6 is longitude. This is a range name on the airport sheet. On this sheet, latitude and longitude are also VLOOKUPs to another sheet with zip code information from the 1999 U.S. Census. In this case, a VLOOKUP equation is wrapped by if error, so if an error message is returned, nothing is displayed in the cell. Airports are listed for the world, but zips are only available in the United States since the data came from the 1999 U.S. Census. VLOOKUP is wrapped in the if error function to suppress error messages when there is no match for a specified state and city. In Excel, getting the formatting exactly as I wanted was easy, as I can see each cell as I do the formatting. The distance of airports closer than 50 miles is displayed in red using conditional formatting. So how would I do the same thing in Access? I'll start by creating a blank Access database. I'll call it VLOOKUP in Access Distances. Now we'll double click to open it up. I have a blank database with nothing in it. I will use the same zip code reference and list of airports. Both of these tables are available in the Access database you can download from my website. From the ribbon, I click on the External Data tab. I choose Access since I will import the tables from another Access database. I can browse or I can paste my path and then browse. I'll get my airports table and my zip codes table. I see the two tables in my database. I'm going to switch the category of the navigation pane to object type. The airports table shows the airport code, airport name, city, country, and state for all U.S. and Canada. The airports are all over the world, so the state field is often blank. The zips table shows zip code, city, state, county, latitude, and longitude for the United States. In Excel, I filtered the airports for New York. In Access, I will make a query that just shows airports in New York. Create ribbon, query design. From the show table dialog box, I click add for airports and then close. In order to see this equation better, I can also use the Zoom box. I can right-click in here and choose Zoom or Shift F2, and I can change the font to something bigger and maybe something a little easier to read. So here you can clearly see where all my quote marks are, and I have delimited the value that I'm using from the field with quote marks as well. Switch to data sheet view and I see three cities that need to be edited so they can be found in my zip code table. As I change information and move off the record, Access automatically saves it and refreshes the record. I can save by clicking on the pencil myself as well. DLOOKUP gives me the information I want. I could get latitude and longitude the same way. This method, however, does not take advantage of the power that Access gives us to relate data. I'll drag the zips table into the query from the navigation pane, resize the field list so I can see everything. I'll link these tables on city and on state. Now let me take a look at the datasheet view. 
Here I have an error message because the city field is in two places and I have an equation with city and access doesn't know where to get it. So I say, okay, I see, I see. I'll fix this. I preface I preface the field name with my table name and then dot and the field name. Since my criteria is coming from airports, I want the city to come from airports also. Now let's look at the data sheet view. And now we have 703 records. We have a lot more records than we want. We can limit these records by grouping them. Click the totals button. Now we have 19 records again. The problem with this is the zip codes are going to be arbitrary, which uh, you may or may not see in a moment. Instead of getting the zip code from a DLOOKUP, let's see what the zip code is in our zips table. When I run this again, now I'm back to lots of combinations, and as you can see, the DLOOKUP just gets uh, some arbitrary value every time, uh, the first one it comes to. And the zip code field, here I have all the combinations. Well, I want to limit this zip code to just maybe the minimum value. So I go back to the design view. I don't need this lookup field anymore, but I will use this criteria. I'm copying it, highlighting it, and pressing copy. Under the zip in the criteria cell, I'm going to use a dmin and then paste that same criteria I had for dlookup. Look at the data sheet view again. There we go. Now we can see some consistency in our dlookup and dmin, and that is only because my zip codes table happens to be sorted by zip code. So let me go back to the design view of this. I don't need this column. I'll click in the little column header area and press delete. I want also to get latitude and longitude. So I'll just double click those and let me see what the results are here. I see all 19 records. Let me go back to the design view of this. I'm going to do a couple things to speed this up. Instead of grouping by latitude and longitude, I'll just have it take the first value it comes to. Actually, what I think I want is the group bys to go away. Let's take off this totals button. Let's see what we get without it. There are our 19 records. I don't know that we gained any performance. That D-min equation in there really slows things down. But it does uh, make sure we get just the first zip so our Excel and Access numbers compare. Ideally, we'd have an address for the airport and we would get the zip code from that. I'll save this query by right-clicking on the tab and choosing Save from the Shortcut menu. I'll call this Q Airports NY. And now I'll close this query. And let's just look at this Excel sheet again. Here I have a combination for every set of data. So between every airport, I'm going to calculate a distance. So what I'm going to do on top of this is make what's called a Cartesian query, which gives me all the combinations. In this case, I'm just going to close that Show Table dialog box, and I will drag my field list twice. And just so this doesn't get confusing, I'm going to just right-click and Show Properties. I'm going to give these aliases. This will be for Airport 1, and this will be for Airport 2. So I have one airport listed down the left and one airport listed on the top. I need the airport code, the latitude, and the longitude for each. So I will look now at the data sheet view of this information. And uh, the data looks good. However, I don't like uh, these long labels at the tops of the columns, and that's because the field name latitude is in both places. The field name longitude is in both places. Same with IATA. So I will specifically label these. Um, I'll label this one LAT1. Now press Tab, F2 to edit, Home to go to the beginning. All right, now I have labeled all my columns so they'll be easier to tell apart and shorter names because I'll be typing them. I'll give this query a name. We're going to create another query. We'll use the Query Wizard, the Crosstab Query Wizard. Switch the view to Queries. 
choose our Cartesian for the source. In the row header, we'll put the first airport code, and in the column header, the second one. It doesn't really matter what we put in the middle because we're going to change it. Don't need a row to add things up. Go to the next dialog box, and here's where I can give it a better name. I'll just shorten it and view the query. Going to the design view, I'm going to change what's in the middle. I'll just first, I'll just best fit all these columns. Here, I'm going to give it an equation. I am going to calculate distance. So let me go grab my code. Just copying this. Now I'm going to press Alt F11 to go to the Visual Basic Editor and insert a module. Paste my get distance function, debug, compile. Copy the name of the function so that I can give this module a good name. Get distance needs two sets of coordinates, a latitude and a longitude, and then another latitude and another longitude. And optionally, I could change whether it's reported in statute miles or nautical miles or kilometers but I will leave it set to the default. So now I save and my function is ready to use. So in this cell, I'm going to get the distance. Now here is where I had to use a bunch of VLOOKUPs in Excel, but in Access, they're all right here. And I will save this again before I take a look at it. Oh, I uh, don't want to just count these, do I? Let me just go grab the first one. Now I'll save this again. I always like to save everything before I actually look at it. Switch to the datasheet view. Let's see how those compare. A few more decimal places than I've got in Excel, but the numbers look like they are the same. What I can't do with a query is make everything all pretty. I'm going to have to define a report. So rather than changing the format of the numbers here, I'll do it all when I set up a report. Close this. Now I'll select my cross tab. I'm going to go ahead and close these other tables too. I'm going to create just a regular old report, whatever the wizard is going to give me because I'm going to change it. This is what my report looks like out of the box in a Access. I need to format the numbers so they don't show any decimal places. I also need to color the rows, and that's going to be a little tricky because in Excel I could just look at them and say, oh, every fourth one is this dark orange, and I colored them. Then I use the Format Painter a lot also, but in Access I don't see the, the report until it's done, so I have to think of another way to do it. I can use a hidden control to count the rows, and then I can test to see if I'm on an even row, which will always be white, or an odd row, which will be various different colors. I'm just right-clicking on the tab and choosing Design View. You could also use the View button up here. If you're not in tabs, you can switch views easily here. In Design View, I'm going to collapse this navigation pane, and I'll select all the controls that my imaginary line touches, and first thing, they don't need to be so wide. So I'll go 0.65 for the width on all of them. Now I'm going to deselect by shift clicking out these two because the rest, oh no, these are my numbers. I want to format my numbers to be standard and zero decimal places. I'm also going to put my page number up here at the top and then I'll get rid of anything else that's in this page footer section. Actually, I'll just cl try, try to close it up, and it closed up. Now, on the report footer, I, I don't need anything here either. I'll close this section up as well. This is only going to be a one-page report. <laughs> in fact, I could have just not had a page number at all. I uh, will delete the little picture that Access gave us. Give this a better header. Press Enter, and I will also change that size. I'll bump it down to 14, make it bold. Double-click one of the handles to do a best fit, and then and just give it a little bit more because not everybody's screen renders things the same. Down here I have a layout view. Now if I come out over here to the side, these things are grouped. I see this thing goes all the way out. Sometimes it can be a little hard to grab this border, but you can grab the right edge and drag it back. 
I need a little more space because if I go on legal paper, let me go to page setup, and on page layout, I'm definitely going to need landscaped, and instead of letter, I'll go to legal, which is 14, but as you can see, I'm going out already very close to 14. I need some space for margins. So I'm going to click right here where I have the four-headed arrow, and on the arrange ribbon, I'm going to remove the grouping. I can tighten these controls up, just select them all, right click on them, and choose align to the left. Now I use these alignment buttons a lot, so I put them on my quick access toolbar. And I'll just drag these things as far over to the left as they can go. Another way to close up the width is to click where the rulers intersect to select the report itself, and then on the property sheet, in the width property, you can just type a really little number, and access will say, hey, I can go that tiny, but I can do this. So it'll bump it down as small as it'll go. So I'll just do a little more cleanup here. I'm going to select all of these and right align them. And I'll also bold all my labels. Now here, I only bold this one because I only see this one row. And that's why the, the formatting can get tricky. I'm going to set the top property of those to be zero. I'm tighten this up as much as I can. And I'll also slide the detail height up. I need some way to to know which row I'm on. So on the design ribbon, I'm going to click text box. Right now I'll just make it up here because I have some space to work with. I don't need the associated label, so I can delete that. This is not going to need to be so big. I will call this row counter. I know there's people out there that are cringing. They want me to start with this with TXT. Eh, sometimes I do. On the data tab of the property sheet, I will set this equal to 1. And for the running sum, I will say overall. And this is what's going to number all my rows for me. In order for it to work right, though, it has to be in the section that it's numbering. So I'll put it down here. I need to make it invisible. So I really don't want it showing up. So double click yes to change it to no for the visible property on format. When I do that, I also change the text color just so I know, oh, hey, that's something that the users aren't seeing. I will save this color, every other label, a light blue color to match the color that I'm using on my Excel sheet. And I'll just kind of take a guess here. There we go. I will pick a um, light orange. Actually, it really doesn't matter because that's going to need to change, isn't it? Sometimes it's white and sometimes it's a medium orange and sometimes it's a lighter orange. So here's where I'm going to need to test this row counter to see where I am. Now on these cells that are going to be blue, let me just pick all those. I need some way of telling them apart. So I'm going to use the tag property. These are blue and now, yes, you guessed it. I'm clicking and I'm shift clicking to select every other control and I'll also get the label and these are going to be tagged with orange. On the format of my detail section is where I'll do all my coloring. I select the detail section bar. I can also click in the detail section where there isn't anything else but that's a little difficult right now. So the section bar is a good place to click and on the format event I'll click on the builder button and choose code builder. Good practice is to put a time date stamp. I use year, year, month, month, day, day. Another good practice is to put an error handler in, but just to make this a little simpler to read, I'm not going to. I'm going to dimension a variable that I can use as a, a way of flipping through all the controls in my section so I can color them. Depending on what the row is, I want to do something different. So I'm going to do a select case and here I'm going to be testing different things, so I'll just say, okay, get the first thing that's true. Case um, me dot row counter mod two equals zero. That means it's either going to be white uh, in the case of the orange rows, or it's going to be a very, very pale blue in the case of the other rows. So if we are on white, then for each control in me dot detail controls do this. First, let's see if the control.tag equals orange. Then control.backcolor, and I'm not getting prompted for backcolor, so here's my little trick that I do. 
I just specify any other control. Matte color equals RGB. Okay, now this is going to be orange, so we want white here. All the colors are white. Now I'll change this back to CTL. Now that I know I have that syntax right. Else if the control tag equals blue, then love the way access tells you very quickly, oh, you've screwed up. All right, here we're going to just pick a very pale blue. Yeah, I'll leave it set to those. That might be a little too pale. 255 is as high as you can go. All right, end of the F. Okay, and now we go to the next control. So basically, we'll just loop through all the controls looking at the tag, and if it's orange, in this case, we're going to set the back color to white, and if it's blue, we'll set the back color to a very light blue. And I just highlight that, control drag it, make sure I'm still holding control when I let go of the mouse. The next test, I'll do the medium colors. So here what I'll do is uh, mod 4, and I'll look for a remainder of 1. So I'll do mod 4 equals 1. That will be the medium colors. For orange, we'll do 50, 200, 170 here. And then for medium blue, we'll go 168. These are red, green, blue values, 168. I go from 0 to 255, 216, and then 224. There's only one, one row situation left, so we'll just do a case else here. And that will be our light colors. Okay, so light orange is going to be 255, 232, and 218. And here we'll have 200, 230, and 230. Then the other thing we need to do, well, after we end our select, have to balance this like parentheses, is we need to loop through all the controls again and see if we need to make them red. So here I'm just control dragging this code. My test is going to be the control value is uh, uh, less than or equal to 50. Then the control for color is going to be red. So all red, no green, and no blue. Uh, oh, helps to spell control, right? Also going to make the font bold. So now I'll copy these two things and else paste those and just set this now to black. If it's black, don't need it to be bolded. So now debug compile. CTL. See if you spell these things wrong, you get told and you get a chance to fix them. So debug, same problem. CTL, debug, compile. <laughs> I think now I'm just going to do Control H and get all of these in the current procedure because obviously I screwed up in a lot of places. So now debug, compile, save it, and moment of truth. Is it going to work? Go to the print preview. We need the borders. Let me go back. Have to do borders. Make it look more close. Also, I'll take out the little extra label in the top upper left corner. Skin designed you. I will select all of these at once and make the border orange. Get rid of this extra label because access doesn't need it. Save. I will take a look at the print preview. This should look much better. And here we are, Access and Excel doing the same thing. Formatting is a little different, but boy, I tell you what, it looks pretty close.